I listen, I just wanted my own currency. And I had so I had much to, to ask. I wanted to come up with. I came up with something called Toyota Coin. I thought it was going to revolutionize the dealership. <laughs> Started talking to a couple guys online. We meet up in person. Long story short, I got raped. <laughs> I got tricked into sucking cock, and that's why I'm here so at Grayfield is... Elementary <laughs> talking to you kids today to warn you about the dangers of cryptocurrency. Yeah. So this <laughs> a lot of you have been hearing cool stories about Bitcoin being used to buy downloadable content and video games. It's not happening, kids. Yeah. There's not a single game where that works. Instead, I'm now HIV positive going around to <laughs> schools. Whoa, Jim. So this Jim. is separate from you getting raped in I've Toyota. had a hard life. Yeah, Where Jim, keep, it's been a long road. Some people, they go through life and they learn a lot of different lessons. Mm. And some of us learn the same lessons <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over yeah. again. Do you think at a certain point it becomes part of your identity and you think of yourself as a guy who gets raped? You know, uh, Nietzsche once said <laughs> that the only way to find the true soul of a man mm -hmm. is to put a cock in his mouth and see how he reacts. <laughs> And that was told to me by a very wise man, a man I respected, who I found out years later was also a sex criminal. Right. What was his name? Uh, his name was Robert. I met him at a bus stop <laughs> that he, I would find out that he was living at. <laughs> and by any chance, did you suck Robert's cock? I did, because <laughs> he said the thing about Nietzsche, who I thought it was probably, that was smart. It seemed like a smart thing. Yeah, yeah, he's so smart. smart. You know, I thought maybe later he'd buy a Toyota. <laughs> right. He was saying, he was like, <laughs> talking about, oh, I hate taking the bus. He said, I overheard you. You're talking about, you're the guy that sells Toyotas, right? And I said, yeah, that's me. And he said, boy, I'd really, I, I'm really tired of taking the bus. I, I would love a Toyota if somebody would just, uh, you know, but I have too much cum in my balls to yeah, buy one. Give me the... Uh, mm -hmm. what they it's slowing me down. <laughs> slowing me down. <laughs> These heavy-ass balls are making it impossible for me to reach for my wallet. Yeah, give me the sweet Jimmy treatment. <laughs> sweet boy Jimmy treatment <laughs> from uh, down there at uh, DeLorean Toyota. <laughs> DeLorean Toyota. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> the Toyotas of the future today. Wow. <laughs> Did you guys ever get sued by the DeLorean company? No, because John DeLorean actually oh, raped, raped, oh, he raped you. <laughs> and he was always Damn, worried. You can't <laughs> stop getting Jim from fucking Wisconsin. For, Jim from Fond du Lac loves getting raped. John, he doesn't love it. It just happened. John yeah. DeLorean, Constantly. we had a whirlwind romance where he <laughs> took me to Northern Ireland with him when he was planning on building the factories and wow, I thought you've it, had an interesting life I thought you said you were married to a woman in my mind I thought road. he was was head hunting me for a position <laughs> as the vice president of sales at DeLorean right. but it turns out he thought I was cute and wanted my boy pussy mm, but he did fly you out that says something he flo flew me out I, I knew something was up when I got there and there were roses and a dress wow, in my you hotel got, <laughs> you got wine to dine <laughs> There was very little discussion of uh, of a, a, any kind of job position, and when I asked him about it, he said, "What position?" Mm. I I sent you a letter in the mail that said, "I would love to blow a load in your mouth." Mm. That's and that's a romantic please letter. Please call me. <laughs> and I thought he meant to give me a job. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's uh, I don't know, Jim. That kind of seems on you, man. No, that's it a was the it was the eighties. It, it was, was the a 80s. different. People had a lot. I guess of you're right. I don't know all the I don't know all the up. slang from back people then. People talked in a very particular manner in the 1980s. <laughs> it was the first decade you weren't allowed to openly use the N word, and white people were still figuring out right, how to say things. Right. We were saying new sayings. We couldn't say the N word, but we hadn't yet stolen cuss words. Black people style. Right, mm -hmm. right. So you right. go around, you'd be like, "Hey, shit." At Ass. Right. Get your dick ass car off my. Yeah, I'm gonna blow a load in your mouth. I'm gonna blow a load in my. I'm gonna fly mouth. you out to Northern Ireland. <laughs> blow a load in your mouth. <laughs> hey, shit, fuck. Hey, shit. Fuck. I'm gonna blow a load in your mouth in Northern Ireland. So you while read, you're in a pretty red dress. <laughs> you've seen the letter. Right? I've seen the letter. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh. So man. you're familiar with. So obviously it's a mistake. And it's then, a mistake anyone could have made. And down here at the bottom, the lipstick kiss. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. that's funny for. 
a guy, he was wearing lipstick. For a guy to do a lipstick <laughs> on a letter. Right. And I sent a letter back, and I said, I'm, I'm very open to be put in any position by you yeah. with my own lipstick kiss. Right. Because right. I thought was, that was perhaps some sort of Northern mm-hmm. Irish Culturally. etiquette. And yeah, now is John, like, so John DeLorean is from Northern Ireland? Or I what think is? he's also from Wisconsin. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. All letters are sealed. Now, are we kiss. sure this was a man named... So... So you fuck he fucks with the, so in the eighties he fucks you in Northern Ireland and then a decade or so later he hires you and tells you he, he needs a real cocksucker. No, that you're confusing uh, with John the manager, DeLorean with the manager of John DeLorean. DeLorean. just a sales manager of DeLorean <laughs> But this two different did, guys. But this wasn't. Two that different seemed like guys. it was about ten years apart, though. <laughs> no, it was. It was about six years apart. <laughs> okay, so you fucked John DeLorean, <laughs> I did. and then you work at a different. You were already a car salesman, yeah. So you work at a different dealership, and I guess also in that time you get well, you married. You have to keep in mind that uh, the DeLorean could travel in time. So <laughs> oh, I see. I worked at the DeLorean <laughs> dealership, and then John DeLorean came oh, from it was the like past that to sue DeLorean. the dealership. Mm. At which I met him, and he brought me back to the past with him. <laughs> I see, I to see. To rape oh. me in Northern Ireland <laughs> in the early 80s and re-deliver and me back to right, 1987. Right, right. <laughs> and he said, good luck proving that in a court of law. Yeah, that's next to impossible. <laughs> and then everybody thinks I'm insane. Right, yeah. right, right. Like E. Jean Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> They Everyone say, this guy's, they say that sexy. guy's a real E. Jean Carroll. <laughs> That's what they call you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and what have you been doing since? Because that, I mean, <laughs> all the stories you've told us, the latest time was 2003. <laughs> so what have you been doing in the... <laughs> I started a podcast about the Westminster Dog Show. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. You rate the doggos. Uh-huh. Well, I and I tell you, I it's kind of defunct now because the first, the first couple episodes I had some friends on and it was nice we just talked about the dogs mm-hmm. third episode we had a big get oh yeah Who'd lawrence lawrence fishmeister does his name ring a bell <laughs> not I know lawrence the first 75 percent did yeah, yeah. well lawrence fish burn but there's an actor who played morpheus. Morpheus. You're, you're thinking of the black guy from the fucking uh, from morpheus from the king of new york i am yeah larry larry fishburn yeah the uh but this guy is was the premier judge of the Westminster Dog Show. Oh, wow. That is a big get. From 1973 until 1993. What kind of relationship did you guys have? <laughs> well, we were just going to interview him for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and he got into town early, and he uh, said, I'm at my hotel, and then we have a couple of hours before we do the show. Why don't you come over? <laughs> Hang out. Yeah. And we can talk about uh, so, some Toyotas. I was thinking. Whoa, oh, wow. So, but you're out of the game. You're uh, a podcast. Dogs. And I said, I don't really want to talk about Toyotas. I had kind of a traumatic experience. <laughs> I'm you just sold in, them for years. Oh, I said, oh, no problem. We can just, uh, and so we got to his, his, I got to his hotel, and it was nice. He's showing me awards that he had won and yeah, pictures of yeah. him with presidents. And right. Different different characters. And he must Ronald, be pretty old at this him point, and Ronald too, right? Reagan, him and Margaret Thatcher. He had a picture of him and Osama bin Laden. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <laughs> so he was a popular guy back in the 1980s, and uh, he, uh, you know, he said, you know, uh, do you want to? Do you want me to give you a sample? And I said, of what? And he said, of how I judge the dogs. And I said, sure. And he said, well, <laughs> get get down like a like a puppy dog on all fours. And he oh, had a no. collar and a leash, and he <laughs> oh, put, no. put it on me. Uh huh. Oh, no. And I said, okay. And then he had a little dog snout <laughs> and some ears, and he put on me. And, uh, you know, he's like, well, go around the room. And I thought it was weird at first, but then I kind of got into it. You got into it. You know, and I'm like, uh, woof, woof. Oh, wow. And he's like, okay, come over here. Come over here, Jim. And we're going around the room. And he said, well, you know, it's it's not really working because a dog, you know, doesn't wear clothes. Doesn't wear clothes. This oh. is really tripping me up. And that's where, it, you know, I said, okay, something seems like Something's it's up. up. <laughs> Something's that, at that point, your spidey <laughs> senses start tingling. <laughs> Something's up. <laughs> <laughs> with the collar on, with but the I dog mask. He did have a point. Dogs don't wear they clothes. They don't. They wear a collar. So but I, I took my clothes off, and I'm going around the the apartment, and he said, okay, well, get up on here in the bed, boy. 
Mm. And I'm up on bed on all fours, and he reached under my legs and grabbed my scrotum and started massaging my testicles. <laughs> oh, wow. That must have felt kind of good at first. And, you know, I thought it was weird, but he's like, this is the most important part of the dog That's show. That's how he judges. Uh-huh. And, he's, and I said, what are you checking for, testicular cancer? And he says, no, a lot of people don't understand what's going on when the judge... I was the guy that invented this. Oh, wow. You know, back in the day, they, none of the, they looked at me like I was crazy when I started feeling the dog's balls. Right. Right. But what really sets a dog apart at the dog show <laughs> yeah, yeah. is the level of obedience right. of the dog. <laughs> right. And it's indicative of the breed. Yeah, so when being you, a good boy. When you play with a dog's balls, right. a regular dog will probably bite you. A sure. show dog knows not to bite you. Mm. But there still might be an underlying level of tension that the dog is experiencing. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you're playing with the dog's balls... What you want to look for is the tightness of the dog's asshole because that indicates how stressed out the dog and, is. And how do you check for that? And so he's massaging my balls, and I notice my asshole is a bit tight. Right. And he said, so this would be a fail. Mm. This would be a, this would be a not a pass because yeah. you're not relaxed Worst in show. And, uh, you know, I said, well, I, geez, I, I, wanna you know, I want to succeed. I don't want to be up show, stage by a dog. And yeah, I think, you know, I, I got lube out of his bag and he fucked me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, how much more? Well, we got three minutes left. <laughs> we got three minutes left. So he said, <laughs> as he slid each inch into my ass. Right. Uh-huh. Uh, he and when saying, that's happening, what are you thinking? Just out of curiosity. I'm just, I'm saying, I'm a Dalmatian. I'm a Dalmatian. Right. I'm a Dalmatian. <laughs> I'm a Dalmatian. <laughs> and then he said, he, he pulled my hair back and he said, if you're a good enough boy, I'll come buy one of your slut Toyotas. Wow. And that sent me into a spiral. Right. Oh, that was like your sensory and, recall. And much like a dog, I sort of snapped around and I ripped his trachea out with my teeth. Oh, wow. I really it turned snapped. into to a feral animal. And uh, you would think that murdering a man with your bare hands, you know, your... your uh, by chewing through his his neck veins and mm-hmm. bleeding him out in the hotel room would give you enough street credit that when you're invariably in sentenced to ten years in prison mm-hmm. for manslaughter, that uh, you get a little respect. You get respect. <laughs> right. Yeah. They found out about the dog thing, and I don't even know where they got a kennel to put <laughs> in jail. In jail. <laughs> but day one, they already had toys for wow. me and little princess dog outfits that I had to wear. Wow. And uh, they said uh, there was a guy named Tyrone that called me his little Bijan Freeze. Mm, I see. That's me. And boy, you know, I thought I knew what being raped was (laughs) before I went to jail. (laughs) But these guys in there, it's like it's like the NBA. Right, right. You're playing street ball out. The speed of the game is so much faster. The speed and the power. When you get into a Midwestern state prison, a frigid landlocked hell Mm -hmm. filled with just the the raw, unbridled rage of of maladjusted (laughs) racial tensions over the last hundred years. Mm Mm-hmm. A place that's uh, too fake to deal with racism. Right. Mm-hmm. They really let you. They let a dog have it. They let a white dog named Jim really let his let his. Yeah. They really put a pound on his asshole. And the worst part about it was I couldn't do my podcast while I was. In yeah. There. So you it didn't kind of fell apart. You guys had at the Westminster. <laughs> so show. after we two getting, episodes, we were getting a lot of. We were seeing a huge uptick in traffic because <laughs> that was a big get. The we were seeing a lot of good you. metrics. We were averaging maybe about seven hundred and fifty thousand downloads per episode, <laughs> and I was getting. <laughs> Really? Holy I was, shit. I was getting emails from people from all over. Two or three guys. One of them was in California. He, he told me his autism. He's lived with his mom his whole life. And it really it really brightened his day to listen to me talk about dogs and and stuff. And, uh, and you know, to know that I was making a difference in someone's life really felt yeah, good. That must have felt worth really. It. And he, he I, so I emailed him back and I said, no, thank you. I appreciate it. And he said, listen, I'm actually going to be in Fond du Lac. <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> and I was out on parole and, you know, I, said, I didn't have anything to do. And he was like, well, do you want to meet me at, my own at the drive-thru of, of uh, fucking 
whatever the Midwestern okay. version of Whataburger is. Right, and, right. And that guy raped me also. Yeah, at Culver's. Fuck. And that at yeah. Culver's, you had a nice custard in your system. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a so your cheese curds. Jim, I gotta say, pal. So now you're out of jail. Yeah. When's the last time you were raped? <sighs> How long has it been? Do you have one of those boards at your house that says days zero since. days since getting raped? You know, I feel like that's a very personal question. Okay. You've shared a lot. I, I don't think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's outside of my Midwestern good grace. Your values. Yeah. My Midwestern value system. Well, right? listen, Jim, we're all having a good time hanging out. Do you maybe want to come back to my place after this? You know, I would love to, but I'm meeting with a potential investor down at the Econo Lodge on Route 40. Okay, oh, wow. Investor in what? <laughs> Wait, you're meeting at the Route 40 of Pulaski in- Highway in uh, Rosedale, Maryland? Sure. <laughs> Yeah. But you're going to get the pod back up and running? I'm going. There's a guy who might buy podcasting equipment for me, but he says I got to suck his dick to get it. <laughs> and I think that's just an expression. Yeah, yeah it's, it's probably an expression. <laughs> 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 uh, well, maybe another time, Jim. Maybe another time. <laughs> and that's how you burn 30 <laughs> minutes. Look pretty good. I love Jim. The guy that can't stop getting raped <laughs> from Fond du Lac. <laughs> 